We're going to take a f tour around Hollywood, where the glitz and the glam apparently mean more than the reality of human suffering. You got this movie, Sound of Freedom, right? It's about human about f slavery that's happening right now. I mean, we got over 50 million people, including millions of children, trapped in slavery right now. Nah, these celebs, they're too busy virtue signaling. They don't really care about you or anyone. They are too busy crying out about some endangered beetle halfway around the world. You got this powerful movie here, a real kick in the gut that shines a light on this horrifying, ongoing reality. But when it comes to this monumental issue of slavery, of humans being bought and sold like livestock, it's crickets. But it's all hush-hush like the industry's got a gag order or something. These are people who have the power to bring real attention to this issue, but they're as silent as the grave. And where's the outcry? Where are the marches, the hashtag campaigns, the social media blitz? Where's Brad Pitt, George Clooney, Meryl Streep, Jimmy Kimmel, Robert De Niro, Trevor Noah? Hell, where's f Madonna? Makes you wonder, doesn't it? These same folks who are so eager to parade around in their million-dollar gowns and tuxedos, preaching about human rights and equality, where are they now, huh? But you know what? We don't need them. We, the people, we're the ones who can make a difference. We don't need Hollywood's approval to do what's right. Sound of Freedom. It's more than a movie, it's a message. So to hell with the celebrities, to hell with the silence. We got the power to make a change, to bring an end to modern-day slavery. And that, my friends, is worth more than any Oscar. So if you've been on my community tab, then you'd know that I've been promoting Sound of Freedom a lot and practically begging you guys to go see it, okay? There's been so much controversy around this movie and I just feel like mm, we're about to get into a lot of these details. I'm gonna try to make this as palatable as possible and as quick as possible. But first, hey friend, welcome to my channel, Korean Allude, where we deep dive and break down the most iconic stars through history. If you're not yet subscribed, please be sure to do so. And if you're already subscribed, please be sure to turn on your notifications so you never miss an upload. Without further ado, let's get into this video. So if you haven't heard about Sound of Freedom now, let me tell you what it is about. So the film is based on the true story of Tim Ballard, a former Department of Homeland Security agent who tries to save children who have been trafficked. Ballard reportedly has not claimed to conduct a mission exactly Exactly like the one in the film but the movie ends with a montage from Ballard's organization's real mission in Colombia and though the movie was horrifically scary and gave me chills truth is the last mission that it went to because I'm not gonna tell you the full plot because I really want to encourage you guys to go see it the last mission that they went on was not like the two kids that were in there the main subject of course they're fictional they weren't gonna put the real identities of anyone on there but the truth is even more horrific what really happened is even more horrific than what happened in the movie the movie did kind of make it palatable it was pg-13 um, they tried to make it as palatable as possible I'll say that that it didn't really make you want to throw up or sick to your stomach though it was pretty intense okay now there's been a lot of controversy around this movie because of Jim Caviezel and Ballard they've been in some scandals and we're gonna talk about that too so I'm gonna read this article from Forbes that was written that was written basically yesterday about the movie because a lot of Hollywood elite not even I wouldn't say just Hollywood elite a lot of people want to make it seem like it's just Hollywood but it's not <laughs> everyday people do this and there's been so many stories of babies being stolen in hospitals um, babies being sold on a black market to be adopted to women who cannot have children it's not just in this context this happens outside of Hollywood too like don't just limit all of this into Hollywood we all know you know somebody in your neighborhood even probably in your home that has this strange addictions for kids and that try to normalize it etc so please but Hollywood is kind of like the hotbed and they've had this agenda to really promote this and make it like a norm and the language that surrounds people that prey on the young um, has changed a lot and you're almost like shaming these people if you call stuff out and I'm just gonna tell you this we're gonna get real into this okay so some of the critics for the films oh and before I start so in my community tab, I've spoken about it and on other platforms, been trying to encourage people to go see it. And I've noticed some bot comments. I've told you guys before on YouTube that there are bots that comments on Instagram, Twitter, um, YouTube, and a lot of you guys get so heated. They'll comment like some divisive crap, like racial stuff, like, or they'll comment some just weird stuff and then real life people like you and me would be arguing with these people and they coming back at us the whole time you're arguing with an AI bot. 
that was there to create that kind of chaos under a post or create like division even fact checkers which jim caviezel spoke about fact checkers also i've always had a thing against fact checkers like who are they why can't we physically know who these people are what's their accreditation to say that this is fact and this is not and like who are these people on twitter sometimes when you see someone being canceled on twitter i told you guys that too now with the investment of ai they can just mass produce all these um tweets that about this person some saying the same thing etc if you see stan twitter some of these people are bots they're bots they're bots i'm not saying anything but there's celebrities now too that will have that happen um i did a video for garcelle bouvet who there was this whole scandal about all these bots that were sent to attack her son if you recall and they were paid for by one of the housewives allegedly paid um this company because they have companies out there that sent all these bots to mass harass her son online and celebrities do that too either to propel like their music out there they'll have all these bots they pay for hit tweets hit this that whatever they, this thing's happening on youtube so i've noticed with this movie every time i talked about it there was these suspicious accounts that don't exist they don't respond back to you when you have logic and they'll repeat it was like similar comments that kept being repeated oh don't watch this because this produces what did it and then you'd ask for more information and and then when you click on their page and i know when the person i'm communicating with is not even real okay so be careful with that because i've noticed a lot of reviews for the movies that were bots that were like mass reviews etc that's trying to take away from the movie that's all i say something isn't right here i recently made a video talking about the strange occurrences happening to viewers trying to watch sound of freedom well it's gotten worse just check out these people's experiences there's no one in here and then it said that they were sold out this is ridiculous tried going to see sound of freedom and this happened no one left until they played the movie. They tried to give us free tickets if we left. Have you heard anything about the other movie theaters? Not um, work, AC not working? Like the other, like the other houses? No, well, like or around the whole country, different theaters. In this movie only, the AC doesn't work. It's like super stiff. Oh, really? Yeah, you should, oh, you no, should look, yeah, at, I didn't, I didn't you should look online. It's like, no, it's insane. If anything, it's probably just, I don't know. I know it's been very popular so the more people you have in a theater the more the uh, different the yeah, we, yeah we've been going so to movie yeah, opens yeah, our whole life so and weird. it's never happened yeah, it's yeah. fire alarm goes off and people still watch the movie they can't stop the truth and then this new generation of ai like <laughs> have discernment for everything that you look at read just no nothing is even real anymore it's oh earth is so stressful and ghetto and fabricated and fake and it's just okay so that's one to say but some of the critics been against them where i've seen the bots have been commenting the most is the film has been criticized for the way it portrays child exploitation and because both Ballard and Jim Caviezel, who plays him in the film, has expressed openness to QAnon and similar conspiracy theories in the past, right? Caviezel also has spoken at multiple QAnon events where he promoted the adrenochrome conspiracy theory, which claims, you know, what the adrenochrome mean, uh, theory is that they take these kids from their homes, they snatch them up, and they go and harvest their blood. Basically, they take their blood from them, they inject them into um, these celebrities to make them look younger, or rich people, rich doctors, certain communities, etc. They'll use their blood for stuff. Now, I'm about to go a little left field with y'all, but follow me, follow me, okay? So as somebody who's from the islands, I always use this example that one of the things that I noticed with America and only America so far and European countries I've traveled to well and in France, I've noticed people can be a little bit more superstitious in France too and more open to that. But only in America has the media and entertainment consumed the people so heavily and also have convinced everyone that evil is not real, like the devil is not real. The devil doesn't exist, it's a fairy tale, it's a pitchfork, guy with horns, all of that when it's not true. Lucifer was created beautiful, his body was full of light, his body was made with music, you know, and he was gorgeous to the point where he fell in love with his own beauty. So they have you have this fairy tale, scary movie, horror type of vibe to kind of um, keep the people into this like, 
weird, uh, this is not real thing to where now people question everything when you tell them. And I feel like I was blessed to be born in the islands because in the islands, we don't have the luxury of believing things are fairy tale. We witness evil at hand day by day. I always say if you're in, in Haiti, the Caribbean is like, you either really with God and you're holding his hand and you're stuck on that side and you choose God as your God, or you're over there, you know, being um, possessed by something else in day to day life. You see some things and I've seen some things. I've seen some things in my life. And so for me, I know without a shadow of a doubt that God is real, Yahweh is real, and this life is full of evil. And in Haiti, um, specifically it's my country, I, I'm not proud of some of this stuff, but it is a thing, especially from the small town that I was from, Lagonav, which is separated from Haiti, they definitely used children for a lot. When a child is born, it's even as bad as in Haiti. When a woman used to be pregnant in my village, she'd have to conceal it for a very long time. So Lugau, that's what they used to call them, wouldn't come after them. They'd want the kids. Children are very precious because they're so innocent in Haiti, right? So when they're born, it's like the enemy sends all his little spirits, demons or whatever to take that because they sacrifice kids too. Yeah, so that has happened. They, they turn kids into slaves, even in Haiti, even into things like that. And it's, you know, and they'll dedicate their kids to certain gods, little gods, as you call them, that, um, they're in a sense married to this uh, deity and that's who they worship, etc. And they use their blood. They use their blood for these same things. So I'm like, if they're doing this in Haiti, guys, in Haiti, in third world countries and little islands, why is America acting like it's not happening here? And you've had people in America, ex-presidents and stuff that used to go to Haiti all the time and witness, y'all look up these articles yourself. You can pause this video, look up right now an ex-president that went to Haiti just to participate in a voodoo ritual, you know? And you have a lot of, I'll just say, the Haitians don't like Clintons. They don't like them. I don't know a Haitian that like the Clintons. I really don't. We used to love the Clintons, but we don't like them, we don't want them there. They did a lot to us. They did a lot to us. I'll leave it at that, right? But if these people are going down there, they love the spiritualism, and you find a lot of YouTubers here that I used to be subscribed to, I can't subscribe to that stuff anymore that you'd never know, that appear Americanized and everything's a conspiracy, God is not real, and then they come out, oh, I'm a witch. They practice witchcraft and put spells on people and stuff, but somehow everything else is such a conspiracy. You people need to go touch grass, you guys don't understand. And I feel like this is what's been happening, is like people who are waking up are being gaslighted, and I think that's what happened to Jim Caviezel. Like, he, he was gaslighted about the andronochrome and a lot of times these things appear as conspiracy theories until years later that they tell you it's true since the biblical days and the bible jesus was talking about how they used to sacrifice people kids to demons right and god was against that and used to speak to his prophets like take down their shrines and take down their pillars they were sacrificing kids and not just that but they also used their blood for stuff they it's it's a lot that's out there and Hollywood is sick but it happens in every day do you know in my regular life as a Christian Adventist a person who um, is in a church a lot I've witnessed a lot of demonic possessions in my lifetime that I'm ugh, I don't even like seeing that stuff but you witness it and there's everyday people that's in witchcraft that went underneath water that seen stuff that does all those stuff there's a lot of stories that you witness in your everyday people so like i said it's not just hollywood that's why i'm saying that it's not just hollywood that this stuff are happening it happens in your everyday life and i used to think i had this twisted ideology that um white people didn't practice the occult or witchcraft it was a haitian thing or a black people thing or an african thing it wasn't until i was in middle school and then there was these wiccans in middle school there was these little girls that were wiccans and they would cast spells on other kids teachers stuff like that it was just weird i'm like white people touch that stuff they do that stuff even in austria there was this austrian pastor that you know this little girl in austria was possessed by this demon they were serving and stuff and to me it was my own ignorance that I'm like, this stuff happens. And if you're well-traveled, you travel a lot. I've been to quite a few places in my life and I noticed that, okay, I was ignorant to this, that this is not just a Haitian Caribbean 
thing. These people practice evil. They practice evil. They sacrifice kids. They use them. And it's like the enemy has a lust for the young souls. He wants to get them young. And the Lord said, do not suffer any of his little children to come from him. And I'm not trying to scare anybody or preach to anybody or do anything like that. But I was just, it's, I, I don't want to do movie breakdowns on this channel where I'm like sending you guys down to this whole of like, it's one thing I like to expose the darker culture of Hollywood and show you guys that these people were not untouchable. They were normal people. They went through normal things like you, they suffered and stuff. But I don't want to ever promote movies and stuff like that that is going to corrupt your mind or lead you down that way. I'd rather do it more. That's why I haven't really done movie breakdowns on this channel. I'd rather do it more when there's a lesson to be learned, there's substance, etc. from it. So I don't want to do that. So I can tell you for sure, for me, I believe in the adrenochrome theory, no matter what anybody else says. And... I know they like to make people sound crazy or take them out of there or stuff happens to them. But like something Jim Caviezel said is that you cannot serve Christ and be scared of the devil. Like you cannot. You need to fear God. Don't fear men, what men can do to you. Okay? The enemy has no power over you. <laughs> no power over you. Um, I just saw this from Wall Street Silver. It says his days are numbered, re refer referencing me. They will make it look like an accident. He is likely correct. The CIA does this and it is used for blackmailing their assets in high places to keep them in line. Hollywood actor Jim Caviezel says CIA operates world's biggest pedophile ring. Let me explain something to uh, all of you in the world that think that I'm a little girl and I'm afraid of you. I'm not scared in, in the least bit. God brought me into Hollywood to become an actor. He asked me to do that. He was my intel officer the greatest God, that, the only God. Mm -hmm. And he loved me enough to give me a purpose in my life because I was the lowest of the low at that time. And I would gladly trade my life to save these little ones because the screaming that I heard was so horrific. I can't sleep at night. At three in the morning, for whatever reason, I can hear it. So like David, mm -hmm. I love my God. I love him so much, I would give my life for him. Do you understand that? My life is okay especially if it saves these little ones. There's good media, like Laura Logan, people that are giving their lives. They actually go down there, not your stupid fact checkers. And by the way, do you have to go to fact checking school? Where, is that like a doctorate degree, a master's degree? I'm asking Christians, public forget about, Christians, mm. wake up. Stop fearing the devil more than you fear God. Stop being afraid. Mm -hmm. Stop, my, unlike you, I know I'm gonna die someday. I'm not going to die by my own hand. I'm, I'm not going to commit suicide. I mean, but our Lord Jesus Christ, who I love with all my heart, I do not fear you at all. You should fear God. I've witnessed demon possessions flee at the name of Jesus, the name of Yahweh, okay? And people that used to go underwater and, and, and dwell with other spirits and then come back and do this, like flee at the light that you have in you with the name of Yahweh and stuff like that. So I'm not afraid of these things but i do notice their tactics more and more and even in daily life you'll have people that try to make these things seem like they're not really happening and this is one of the reasons that they've been saying don't go watch this movie because he's a nut he's a conspiracy theorist who believes in adrenochrome and QAnon and all of this stuff and so don't support him blah 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 and I know Mel Gibson is not the most perfect person. He's had his past, but a lot of us come from imperfection. Before I came back to Christ, because I, I did abandon him for some time and he had to bring me back, I did my fair share of foolishness and went out there. And thankfully, thank God, I wasn't in the public light. I'm not a celebrity. I'm not out there. So, you know, my stuff was kept secret between God and he shielded me and protected me from that. But a lot of times we like to, we, cancel culture has corrupted us so much, um, which is their job that they tried to do, that now if someone was ever to come and present truth to you, instead of hearing their truth, because the movie was nothing but the truth, you bring up their past to silence them. And that's what the enemy does. He brings up your past to silence you. And you guys have this unforgiving spirit in you for these people that's in your face every day, like these celebrities where it's like, there's no way they could have changed their life when their fruits after their mistake have shown someone who has changed. It's like you're the only one who can change and because this person did one bad thing 
30 years ago, he couldn't have come and see the light, even though every fruit of his tree is showing somebody that has changed. But we eat up stories of ex-people that used to sell crack in the neighborhoods, and now they're this, they're that. You, you, you all take up for Jay-Z, who used to sell dope to his own people. That's now telling everybody to not do that and da-da-da-da. Like, they'll take up for people like that, right? They'll take up for a lot of shenanigans, but unless the person is starting to talk about God. Do you see what I'm saying? So this has been a conspiracy and Mel Gibson has been one person that has promoted this movie so much. He's working on his own, I believe, four part series on how Hollywood specifically focused on Hollywood and what they're doing uh, in terms of the same context. And I pray that <laughs> that goes well because I know people are not too happy. So that's been some of the conspiracy surrounding this movie. Jordan Peterson also did um, an interview with Jim Caviezel and um, Tim Ballard, which was phenomenal. I suggest you guys check that out, no matter how you feel about Jordan Peterson. I know not everybody's too much of a fan with him, of him, but it was a phenomenal, phenomenal interview that you guys would be interested in. And I just encourage people to have their own mind and see stuff for themselves before you take reviews of everything else. So now without further ado, let me get into to this because I know this was a long intro so I know I've done my Naomi Campbell and one of the women in the movie actually reminds me of Naomi Campbell the black model that was actually seducing the kids into getting into this life she not saying that that's what she did she did but it kind of reminded me of that because she was a model and she was squeaky clean but she was mixed up with all these people and was the one running all the operation and um, I'm not gonna tell y'all the whole plot of the movie but it basically shows you how this woman and this ring and this is all based Based on true true events true life story that happened guys and even the island they were in was kind of like the you know ep island i'm not gonna say his full name but um she would see these kids the cute kids and then come to their parents and say oh my goodness discover them and be like look how gorgeous and the way that it did be like from anywhere from five um even younger sometimes all the way up until they're like 15 or 14 i think they stopped there and then they would take these kids and said drop them off to do a test shoot we'll take them and da 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 what this reminds me of is what I've been telling y'all with the Kate Moss. Kate Moss don't want her kids to model. Naomi, Kimora Lee Simmons, who have all spoken out. If you haven't seen those videos, go watch them. They have all spoken about how when they were younger, Naomi was so hurt, so hurt at Tyra for being, for having her mom around. She was abandoned alone. They would take these models, discover them when they were really young, put them in these model houses and that is kind of referenced in the movie but it wasn't necessarily model houses it was more like a hotel for these models that these grown men would come and talk to them Kamora said this in her video they'd basically be pimped out by their agencies be forced to take pictures in compromising situations and they'll be traveling far and these greedy parents abandoned their kids to these people a lot of these parents they did it on purpose i don't care what no one says because even in situations where their kids would end up marrying these older men they gave their permission for that because money was involved and sold off these girls and what would happen much like with the model in the movie i think they were insinuating a lot like you had to see is that they were part of that life because they showed her showing some remorse in the film the young lady that played the model that was getting the other kids um recruiting them in the ring like she was like not too proud of what she was doing but it looked like someone who was hardened and cold and and bitter from what she experienced because she probably was put through the same thing and is now inflicting the same pain to these kids right and jim caviezel played it phenomenally and there's been a lot of conspiracy talk coming after him and i'll tell you guys i did an oprah video a while back on this channel and i had to take it down because it was so heavy and um youtube just kept <laughs> giving me problems with it it was it was giving me a lot of problems and i was like you know what i'm gonna work on another oprah video in the near future i'm gonna you know learn how to talk i had to get a lawyer and everything for youtube when you're doing these type of videos you have to have a lawyer on deck all the time because of nonsense like this to learn how to talk to not have certain issues and to be able to fight certain issues and there was a lot with oprah even with her school in in africa that she opened just a lot i'll i'll just leave it at that and it's like the movie was showing you how it was these powerful people, man, that just, 
I don't know. It was hard to watch in many times. I cried a lot. The whole theater you could hear was full when I went in. Um, and a lot of us was crying. There was this elderly lady that came with her daughter. She was like probably in her 60s sitting next to me with her younger daughter and probably was like 8, 19, 20. And there was just a puddle and we were all just consoling each other, passing around napkins. It was just heavy. It was heavy, but it was necessary. And one thing I like about the movie that he said is these things happen every day, but it makes people so, Jim Caviezel said that, it makes people so uncomfortable that they don't have these conversations at the dinner table. It's not pleasant to speak at how often this happened. There's more than over 2 million kids a year that goes into slavery. And it's not just slavery for their bodies. They have them go work on these opioid farms, like these farms in, in Colombia and other countries where they're producing, uh, if you catch my drift and they're really young, you see them stumping on the leaves and um, they'll use them for indentured servitude also. Unfortunately, even in my country, in Haiti, they, used to, they still have sentanis, that's the name we have for it, sentanis, which is like a normal thing to people where it's kind of like slave work. They pay them pennies and it's kind of the people who's maids in their house, they might give them a room in the back or whatever and they're kind of like slaves. They're cleaning the house, they're cooking and these kids be young, they be like 11, 12 years old. Jiralaku, that's what they call them too. They're in the, in the outside opening doors for people and there's been horror stories of people when they grow up, they get out of it and they're like, yeah, the man of the house used to sleep with me or the older son, the woman would mistreat me, they, this and that. It's just a lot of forms of slavery for a young kid. We ended up finding at the end of this multi-month operation, this little red door in downtown Port-au-Prince, but you open it up and it's a, a den of this Satanism. It's It, it was this, this dungeon looking place and these children were being there was the first time actually we ever walked in on a raid and saw the kid actually being a couple of them had had babies and we found the infants they were using to like leverage the, the young moms. She had been kidnapped at age six after her parents died in the 2010 earthquake in Haiti. And from six to 16, I think, you know, she was just brutally for money and there's children behind them and they are in places. Sorry. <laughs> And they, they are in places where there's no hope. They don't think there's hope. People living there don't think there's hope. The, the government officials don't think there's hope. They're not looking for them. This last year, we took down a baby factory in Western Africa, or kidnapping young women, children, young as 13 years old, and impregnating them, getting their babies out, and then selling their babies immediately to witch doctors who are selling the, their organs or cutting off the kid, kids' genitalia, and they're selling them you know, on the black market because people think that God will bless them. I mean, we've taken down two of these baby factories, um, rescued dozens of children from this, and we're still at it. And I love how it ended with God's children are not for sale, okay? And Hollywood, I say, it brought on a bigger discussion for me with this movie, which again, I encourage everyone to see is that it is sad for me how I've seen movies like Euphoria, all the teen movies, they always showed teens being intimate with each other so freely. I'm very uncomfortable by that. And I did my video on Brooke Shields, if you watch, where she played an 11 year old street worker and this grown man actually kissed her. He's a sick actor to me. I don't care what nobody say, cause while it was real life, he kissed her for real. Was such a pretty baby, if y'all seen. I did a movie breakdown on that too. A lot of Hollywood work try to normalize this and it has worked because now you'll have young you have movies like the shows like euphoria which y'all eat up or you have young performers dressed up any kind of way and you have these beyond inappropriate artists going to school performing for kids and you'll have artists that will sing about these type of things to other people's kids to listen to but they won't have their own kids they've come out and openly say they won't have their kids listen to this music or participate in that lifestyle but they're selling it to your children and in school now they're talking about certain topics that kids should not be concerned about i've i i missed the era when i was in school I was concerned about my arithmetic. I was concerned about SATs, FCATs, and tests that I had to take. But more and more, they're trying to normalize kids into making adult decisions and talk about certain topics that they should not be concerned about until they're older.